Good morning, everybody. How you doing? It is great to see you in all sincerity. Today, we are live at all our campuses. Can, can we just clap at Northport and Punta Gorda this morning? Say good morning. Bennett, it is so good to have you with us this morning. And we want to spend just a couple of minutes just talking to you about what's going on. DC3. There you go. I will, I will tell you that Haiti right now is having a hard time. This is the lowest that I've ever seen in my country, politically, economically, and uh, it's very difficult. You know, uh, the kidnappings uh, is going up. The armed uh, gangs groups, uh, they invade all the territories. I want you to think of a time that you were with a group of people in real fellowship. And I'm not talking about superficial sitting with them in church or shopping and kind of having... I'm talking about a time, a camping trip. For me, it was camping trips, sitting around a fire, a back porch conversation. Or from, for some of us older folk, a front porch conversation. those dream times were the best and they're still the best I have the privilege of sitting around a table with men and women who are the DC3 board and wrestling with issues and the future and what God might do here and how I can be a better pastor and I love when we get into the deep conversations of life there is nothing better than that That's not how life is. Christianity should be the most joyous, beautiful life on the planet. Thank you for Jesus, for the blood applied, because it is the oneness that the Father so desperately desires for us, that the Son, Jesus, prayed for us, and that the Holy Spirit empowers us. You cannot do oneness on your own volition or will, guys. If your unity is contagious, divisiveness is repulsive. We talked about first week a unified church is an unstoppable force. Amen to that? Unified church is an unstoppable force. Let us go. And we're going to say to the devil today, let us go. And then we're going to say to each other, come on, say it right now, let us go. That is breeding isolation through the illusion of connectedness. Relationships are not easy. That's why Jeff and Shane preached to us last week, you got to fight for unity. Glorious day for God so loved the world. He loves us. We do that enshrouded in the blood of Jesus Christ. Jesus and his sacrifice becomes this super curtain around us so that we walk in. What God sees is a totally pure, redeemed child of God. And we can worship and and have the benefits of being in direct communion with God every time we worship him personally, privately, and man, when we get a bunch of people that are locked into Jesus, God will do stuff in this place. I look forward to the days in the next few weeks when we start worshiping that people get up and go, I was healed. I was healed. I've seen it happen before where people walk up and they're crying during worship and they go, my marriage was restored today. Something happened. I don't know what it was, but something happened. And I go, I know what it was. That's because 
we worship and chains fell off just like Paul and Silas in the prison. Come to Jesus. Let us draw near to God with a sincere heart. Guys, every chance you get to worship, you need to take advantage of that. And that may be in your car. That may be getting ready to go to work. That may be when you want to mm, on your children. You have to cradle your hope. Your hope, listen to me, it is the precious gift that the United States that Haiti, that Mozambique is looking for. And you have to cradle it. You have to carry it with reverence and awe. And in America, we have lost reverence and awe for God. We have to consider and commit to accountability. And this is where we're going to stop. It can only happen in a relationship where there is love for God and love for each other. We are going to focus on circles, discipleship, relationships, which is the core of all of that. It's our goal. Pastor and Eddie, Eddie and I are talking about it. Pastor, we're all talking about it. We have got to get back to understanding and doing life together. Personal, I discipline myself, right? That's integrity. What do I do when nobody's looking? Number two, there's mentorship, and you need this in your life. That's somebody that's helping me in my finances, helping me in my discipleship, helping me in parenting, helping me in life, helping me as my career. Mentor. mentorship, accountability, that's it. But the third level is what we call tribal. And that's what the church is. That's, we need to be spurred. Are you being spurred? Are you being a little uncomfortable about your mistakes and your lifestyle? Because I'm going to leave you with this one. God put this in my heart weeks ago. If you're not uncomfortable, you're not accountable. Let's make it personal. Because Steve needs to hear this. If I'm not uncomfortable... I'm not accountable. That doesn't mean you live all the time in discomfort. But somebody somewhere, somehow, every now and then needs to come up and ask you some hard questions because they love you. And at some point, because the Holy Spirit's going to give them things to say to you, how many know a little discomfort will go a long way to put you on the right path? Amen. Amen to that. True accountability cannot exist without feedback and acknowledgement. So today, I say, let's go.